This is the first time a Chinese leader is attending the Vladivostok Forum. Do you think Russia has fully made the pivot towards the East? Well, Russia is working very closely with the East and with China, and President Xi mentioned today that it's actually his third meeting in the last four months uh, with President Putin. And I think it's just very natural because there is one belt, one road initiative that talks about integration. We have our Eurasian Union, and the fact that Russian leader and Chinese leader have great relationship translates into very positive relationship between businesses uh, and into investment. Let's talk about the big deal of the forum, a deal with Alibaba was signed. Jack Ma was here himself to back it. What is Russia expecting from this? Well, for us, it's really a very important technological deal. First of all, it's the first ever in the world merger between e-commerce platform like Alibaba Russia, uh, mobile operator Megaphone that serves 77 million customers, and Mail.ru that has 100 million customers. So the synergies between e-commerce, mobile operator, and social network are going to be significant, we believe. Secondly, it's a great representation of what joint investment between Russia and China can be in technology because Alibaba agreed to localize lots of its technology into Russia and really benefit uh, the Russian economy. For many people, it's access to 600 million customers that Alibaba has all over the world. For us, uh, it's another example of continuing on the strategy to work with best partners in the world. So Alibaba definitely is one of the best technology partners in the world, and we are proud to be a part of this transaction. Um, also, you know, Russian owners uh, at the end will have 52% of the Russian business of Alibaba. Alibaba will have 48% um, of the business. And it shows the wisdom of uh, Jack Ma really building a much bigger business in Russia with good partners. Uh, so we're definitely excited about this deal. Why do you think they chose Russia to really start expanding? Well, they already have quite significant business here. So they transact several billion dollars a year uh, in volume. It's growing 50 to 70 percent a year. So it's a very fast growing business. And uh, Russia is a very promising market, not only for e-commerce, but for cloud computing, for artificial intelligence. So it's a natural partner for somebody like Alibaba. So in the press conference, you were talking about how, and also Mr. Evans was talking about how Jack Ma himself was involved in this deal. Can you take me a bit through that? Yeah, so we've been working on it for uh, about two years. And for us, it was very important that when we had a very good discussion with Jack Ma, we really appreciated his passion. And his passion is really about transferring some of the know-how and knowledge uh, into Russia and seeing the great opportunities that exist in Russia for small, medium business, for uh, young people. So we really clicked on this uh, passion to uh, you know, deliver value to Russian consumers. And then we work through lots of details because for uh, foreign businesses, it's very important to have data in Russia. And we worked on lots of details. And uh, Mr. Evans touched on this. And it's not just, you know, grand idea and that's it. We worked through lots of details about localization, about synergies, about uh, having uh, Russian payment systems, uh, etc. So it took quite some time. But we have a very solid foundation now, and I believe that current Alibaba business will grow 10 times and more uh, in the next, uh, you know, five, seven years. You were just in meetings with President Vladimir Putin. Does he have a good relationship with Jack Ma? Well, he commented that he doesn't believe that Jack Ma should retire because he's too, so young, and uh, uh, we laughed about this. And he appreciates what Jack Ma is doing, and uh, I think Jack Ma's passion uh, in um, you know education field and other fields that he will uh, pursue later on is you know felt and shared and when Jack Ma finished uh, his presentation and his ideas and there were other investors in the room everybody clapped to him and he frankly was the only sort of uh, speaker who got innovation so we have great relationship we appreciate that he is uh, he cares about Russia um, you know and will build on this. Is this Russia's way of diversifying away from oil and gas? Well, definitely. And we believe technology is one of the key areas of investment. 25% of our investment as RDIF will be in technology area. We also announced a, a joint Russian-China venture fund with Tooth Holding, which is um, you know, a major technology park in, in China. So technology is key. We believe that artificial intelligence investment can drive efficiency in many industries by 30-40%. So Russia has lots of engineers, lots of mathematicians, and we want to pursue this technological breakthrough with good partners. 
I want to pivot a little bit, stay on China. Today also kicked off this joint military op, um, exercise between the two countries, the biggest since the Cold War. Would you say that uh, Moscow is, and Beijing are not just pivoting towards each other economically, but also now possibly militarily? Well, again, uh, all I would say is that our leaders have a great respect for each other, and we talk a lot about inclusive projects. Just now I was in a meeting with leaders when we talked about regional cooperation, and lots of regions of Russia and China are cooperating on the regional level, and we have lots of cultural exchanges. So I think we definitely have a good relationship with China. It's a strategic partnership. It's probably the best relationships uh, we've ever had. And I think there is power uh, in building alliances uh, rather than, you know, having pressure and, 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 and fighting. So Do we believe President that President Xi's approach of having partnerships is a good approach. Do you think President Trump has sort of pushed Beijing and Moscow's hand a bit toward, to strategically work together and, and more regionally with other nations? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that because this uh, closeness of Russia China started a long time ago and has been developing. And I think uh, President Trump has some valid points about, you know, making sure that U.S. economy continues to grow. You know, it has good growth, um, probably the best growth uh, over the last four years during his presidency. So, you know, he's doing what he has to do to grow uh, U.S. economy. Uh, but Russia-China partnership is good, but also, you know, uh, Prime Minister Abe is here, and we have great relationship with uh, Japan. We have Russia-Japan fund. Uh, we have a lead of Korea who is coming tomorrow, and Korea partnership is growing. So there is general the sense that Asian economies are focused on an inclusive approach, and that is attractive for Russia. Uh, staying with the U.S., Congress is discussing this bill that will more sanctions. It could target new issuance of uh, sovereign debt as well as dollar-denominated trades. How are you preparing for the potential of, of these new sanctions? Well, we feel that the U.S. is frankly undermining the power and the belief of different economies in dollar. Because if it's just limited to Russia, it's one thing. But we hear many sovereign wealth funds, many other countries saying, well, you know, if sanctions can be implemented, will they also be implemented maybe on China at some time? Will they be implemented on other things? And I think at the end of the day, it's really destroying the credibility of dollar. And, um, you know, we'll have to see if politics prevail or economic rationality uh, will prevail. But uh, obviously, uh, there are lots of countries who are observing what's going on uh, and believe that sanctions undermine free trade, undermine lots of core principles of the world economy. But are you doing anything to prepare for these potentially new sanctions? I mean, the economy has been coping with the ones that, that are ready sh on Russia, but these would really start to hit Russia banks. Well, uh, again, Russia adjusted well to sanctions. We have good oil price. Many Russian companies uh, adjusted. Lots of uh, debt issuances done in rubles. We are working lots of financing that will be done in Rumimbi. So frankly, I'm sure uh, it's possible to hurt Russian economy, but any efforts to hurt Russian economy will also hurt world economy. So, so far, really, sanctions have not had such a profound effect uh, on the Russian economy. Decline in oil prices did, when oil prices were 30 to 35 percent. But now, thanks to partnership with Saudi Arabia, we are back at very uh, solid oil price levels. Yeah. But oil's been a little bit under pressure as well, because you've seen the emerging market sell off. The ruble's been under pressure because of that. We also have potentially aluminum might be back in the headwinds with this October 23rd deadline. Rusal needs to work out the U.S. government. In these volatile times, where do you think investors are looking, f looking at? Well, uh, of course, you know, we are mostly working with long-term investors. So long-term investors see an opportunity in Russia now because, you know, we have P multiple of probably the lowest P multiple in the world. And uh, frankly, um, you know, economy is doing quite well. We have growth. So obviously, short-term speculative investors are not going to be investing in Russia now. Long-term smart uh, sovereign wealth funds and other investors are putting quite a bit of money into Russia. So we'll see who is, uh, has the best strategy at the end. We have very good solid return in both dollars and rubles for our partners every year for the last five years. What worries you the most in this kind of climate? Is it the ruble under pressure because of EM, sanctions from the U.S., or this you know, threat of this global trade war which could really dampen demand? 
Well, I think trade war would be quite uh, dangerous or some kind of other very strong geopolitical or military escalation. And uh, I think there are so many risk factors now on geopolitical level that that definitely has to be de-risked. Uh, and I think, um, you know, there is not generally, if somebody from the hedge fund were to do risk of geopolitical uh, um, analysis, they would see lots of, um, you know, parts that uh, could lead to significant meltdown. So we believe that geopolitics needs to be, uh, you know, de-risked and trade wars are a danger to the world economy.